This episode takes place over the course of a couple weeks, so bear with the so-called current information until it changes with future updates in the later paragraphs. I don't like breakups. They are not fun to be a part of, and it doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on, whether you're the dumper or a thick dumpy. Dumpers get a bad rap, and as someone who is usually a dumpy, I contribute to this rap, but dumpers have it rough too, man. Have you ever seen someone go through the five stages of grief in person over the course of like half an hour? I don't recommend it. First of all, if you're breaking up with someone in person, you might as well time travel back to 1990. What are you doing? Subjecting yourself to both you and the other person's full range of emotions. Break up with somebody over text, it's way less awkward. You'll still cry and get back together three days later, but it won't be so visceral. It's hard to end things with someone you've been with for over a year. That's like a 29th of my entire life. That's no small amount of time to spend on someone whose personality clashes with mine. My girlfriend was very sensitive. I probably don't even need to continue. Any stream of consciousness fan can extrapolate pretty accurately why that shit led to some problems. I am a blunt individual, like an instrument, a cudgel to whack unsuspecting people's emotions when I'm just out here trying to be honest about whatever. And in my mind, I never even said anything mean or that bad, but my girlfriend's purported tears sure told a different story. I would say something that I thought would be a normal thing to say, and then my girlfriend would go to the bathroom out of nowhere and I knew I fucked up. If I peeked my head in there, she'd be sitting on the floor instead of the toilet and I knew she was potty trained so I was like damn she's not about to shit on the floor so I must have shit the bed on this one. I've been broken up with before by other girls for jokes I made or things I said but to me I always thought they were overreacting whether it was me telling someone I noticed they were gaining a little weight or me making a joke about everything in someone's house being shitty after they mentioned multiple things breaking down or not working and they thought I was calling them poor. In this case, it was never about the physical. I always told her she looked gorgeous, no matter what, because I believed, and still believe it, to be true. I said she could dye her hair any color and still be a 10. Every time she said she looked like a potato, I said, call me a salad, because I want you in me. Wait. But multiple times, she would call me out on sharing information about her that she apparently didn't want to be shared. Like, she'd go to the bathroom during a stream we'd do together, and if it wasn't to cry, I'd be like, Alright guys, be glad you're on that side of the screen, because if I have to pee, I have to wait at least an hour for the conditions in there to become survivable again. If we're watching TV and she has to poop, she'll tell me to turn the volume up so I can't hear Chernobyl happening on the other side of the wall. But I can still hear it happening on the other side of the wall. I think she's why my sewage bill has been costing an extra 30 bucks every every month, and she's five foot on a good day and skinny, so I don't know where it's all coming from. But aside from having my bathroom condemned, which I didn't actually make a big deal out of, it's just funny, there were other reasons I finally took it upon myself to end things, namely that sometimes when we got drunk, she would say things like, this is the hardest relationship I've ever been in, or I don't know if this is gonna work, or we're only still together because your dick is so big. Okay, I made up that last one. Call me Hassan Minaj because I'm out here embellishing for personal gain. But the rest were true, and for good reasons, I wouldn't dream of refuting. I am not a relationship guy, it turns out. It doesn't matter how much I love the person. Sometimes I just want to toss my phone in the nearest crevice and spend all day working on videos or something. I don't want to be in constant contact with my significant other. I am a huge proponent of alone time for myself, and especially when my girlfriend is at work, I don't think I need to be texting her every five minutes. This was a big problem. She would ask me what I was doing all the time, and in my head I'm like, aren't you earning money right now? If it's a lunch break or something, sure, but if somebody is on the clock, I don't want to be a reason they get caught slacking or a distraction from whatever they need to get done. And if you're my girlfriend and you're working, I would like to be working too. I can't do distractions. They fuck up my flow. That's why I'm typing this shit at one in the morning with a little runoff intoxication from my last drunk stream. I perform infinitely better when I'm not worried about who I'm actively ignoring and therefore upsetting by also trying to get some work done. But I don't mean this as an indictment on her. I may have broken up with her, but like I said, the writing was on the wall and I knew she was in pain from being with me. She would say that any pain or struggle was worth the relationship, but there's only so much strife you can be the cause of before you want to just reset the timeline like Mortal Kombat 1. She won't want it initially, but the hope is that after a while she'd get used to the idea of deserving better. And if what I've said so far doesn't sound like much of a pain-inducing existence for my girlfriend to have, <laughs> wait till you hear about the nudes from other women. Three months into our relationship, so about nine months ago, we broke up for three days because I wanted a couple of things. One was a lot more time to myself so I could just focus on my channel and work on videos like I'm doing right now. Two was the general freedom that comes from being single, like the ability to pursue or be pursued by something unserious but fun that wouldn't take up a lot of time.
time, because really, time is my biggest commodity. I wish I didn't have to sleep. I'll put six hours of work into a video or two and still feel like I wasted my day by not doing more. I am a content creator, and when content isn't being created at a fast enough clip, I feel very unfulfilled. There's no hand job or reverse cowgirl that can satisfy me as much as the feeling I get when I upload a good video that gets a lot of views. I'm just a born and bred YouTuber through and through, and it's a surprisingly busy pastime that doesn't leave a lot of room for long-term commitment. That said, I, like most dudes, enjoy a good picture of an ass every now and then from someone who's decided I earned it, but unlike most dudes, or maybe not, I don't know, a dad ass doesn't necessarily have to be my girlfriend's at the time. I generally wouldn't seek these interactions out, like if I'm taken, I'm not in people's DMs trying to achieve said asses, but if someone wanted to send me one anyway, I would feel very bad about not accepting. I've mentioned this in a previous episode, but I don't like regular porn. It's not intimate. It's it's not indicative of anything, I didn't earn the right to look at it, it doesn't do much for me. But when a woman bears herself specifically for my viewing pleasure, I know it's because I did something right, like my boss ranking was hella good, or I have the right opinion about their favorite Pokemon. Yeah, as a YouTuber the bar isn't that high. You normal dudes have to impress girls with your charm in person, I get to record mine and reap the benefits forever. Anyway, in the past, I've been in a position where I was in a relationship and someone else wanted to send me nudes, and it just feels like a waste to turn them down. I'm not justifying anything here, I'm just explaining. I know this video will lower some people's opinion of me, so in the spirit of embracing that, I'm choosing not to hold back for my reputation. After all, I don't care what people think of me as long as it's based in correct information, so if I'm going to give you some controversial deets, might as well get it all out there so you can hate me with precision accuracy. My root issue is that I can't turn down attention from girls. Unless they're, like, horrendous. But if they're at least passable, and they express an interest, I'm a sucker for that interest. It's validation I shouldn't need, I'm confident in myself and what I can offer, but if a girl agrees with my own assessment, I'm just immediately endeared to them. Call it not getting enough attention from them in school, call it insecurity, I don't think it's insecurity, but what do I know? Point being, I'm a chick magnet, except the chicks are the magnet, and if they turn on that magnetic field for my benefit, I'm flying across the classroom to get stuck to them. And my ex knew this, because I told her as one of the basis is for us at breaking up nine months ago. I said, this is how I am. I don't want you to be caught up in it and get hurt. I don't want you feeling like you're not enough when it has nothing to do with your quality and everything to do with others' quantity and variation. So I said, let's break up. We're breaking up. Go find somebody better than me. But after a couple days, she still wanted to be with me, and against my instincts and Asimov's first law, I still wanted to be with her too. So we got back together and made it up until a few days ago. But those months were fraught with feelings of insecurity and a lack of self-worth on her end because even though she tried to allow me to get nudes from other people, she was struggling with it. And the funny part, if there is one, is that in all that time, it happened maybe once. It just wasn't occurring, and I was fine with it not occurring. I wasn't seeking it out, I was content to just have the option open. I don't need nudes from other girls on a regular basis, I just need to be free to accept them whenever they do arrive, however infrequent it may be. It probably doesn't make sense, but neither do I. But fast forward to today. It's been a week since I ended it, but we still talk and are on decent terms, and we're even in talks to get back together again because she just does not have the good sense to stay away from my ass, and I can't help but think I'm supposed to be with her, even though aspects of her personality and interests are different from what I would have envisioned falling in love with. She claims to be okay with the nudes thing for realsies this time. She's made it super clear how devoted she is to me despite everything and how sure she is that I'm the right person for her, and I'm thinking about what we should do. I instituted a no-contact policy for a week, that we're a day into, no texting, no interacting, just to see what would happen if we spent some time completely apart, if she'd still be as committed as she is, or if she'd be able to move on. It's just hard to navigate the pratfalls of a relationship when you're not cut out for relationships. And no matter how backwards somebody wants to bend for you, you've got to feel bad that they even feel the need to. It just feels like two incompatible people trying to fight against each other's every instinct to make something work. She's sensitive, I'm blunt, she's fiercely loyal, I'm fiercely a douchebag. They say opposites attract and there's no shortage of attraction, but I'm in the midst of a fucking reckoning with myself, so who's to say where we go from here? Okay, so that today I fast forwarded to is now about three or four days ago. We're updating this episode in shifts because I want to be as complete as I can about things, and I've been sitting on what I've written for a while so I don't have to post an update in a different episode if something drastic changes. Currently, 
We've decided to stay broken up, but we're still going to be friends. She finally just started playing Kingdom Hearts, so this is horrendous timing because it's one of my favorite franchises and I've wanted her to play it for almost our entire relationship. And I wanted to be a part of her experiencing it, but I can't dedicate too much time with us not being together. That said, I also wanted to make one thing abundantly clear, since being the subject of a breakup episode is something no woman aspires to. I am the bad guy here. Christine is an absolutely lovely person. She is very caring, fiercely loyal, unfairly adorable, and incredibly short. One day she will be the greatest thing that ever happened to somebody else. It's just unfortunate that she put all her love and affection in the wrong place. Our wires crossed, but mine were faulty and shocked the shit out of her, and that sucks. But now I'm single, which I believe is what I'm meant to be. I will not be pursuing long-term relationships in the near or moderate future so that no one else can be simultaneously infatuated and devastated by me. It's a hell of an emotional cocktail. People who date me need therapy afterwards more often than not. I'm the kind of guy you get out of a relationship with and then you become a mental health advocate. It's like a patient who beats cancer and then goes to med school to become an oncologist. All my exes had cancer and now they're gonna treat cancer. And I'm not even mean. I don't say things to be hurtful. I don't get angry and lose control. I don't inflict emotional abuse. I just tell the truth or make jokes about something you're sensitive about or cross lines with no regard for their position. If I'm being completely honest, and I've said plenty to sour my reputation already, I have nothing left to salvage and therefore no reason to try and save face, but I genuinely don't believe anything I say is that bad. You can look at the fallout, you can analyze the size of the smoke and try to determine the size of the fire, but I think a tiny fire is polluting the whole ozone layer right now. Specifically when it comes to things I say, obviously the nudes thing is beyond what most people would tolerate, but towards the end she was making jokes about it and the issues were more about my attitude and how I would usually try to logic my way into dismissing most of her concerns about random things. She would feel her feelings and I would be like, here's why you shouldn't feel this way, and then she would still feel that way and we wouldn't get anywhere. I'm told girls don't like when you diminish their feelings, mostly by girls whose feelings I've diminished, but if I see a reason that I think is a good reason for why the way you're thinking about something is wrong or could be readjusted, I will tell you, and I wouldn't even consider not telling you. If we disagree, then fine, I'm not going to jam my opinions down your throat, but I am going to present them beautifully on a plate and try to get your mouth watering to taste them. Spit them out if you want, but at least try them. I slaved over a hot stove to make you those takes, and I'd like to be appreciated. There's a reason 95% of my audience is male and the other five are trans. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it, despite the flawed man narrating it. Like, share, and subscribe. Watch all my other videos or wait for them to watch you. And I'll see you guys next time.